Praise God. I thank and praise God for this time to stand here with the Word of God. And thank God for all His goodness and mercies in our life. As Thanksgiving is around the corner, we might be all thinking about the great Thanksgiving dishes, right? The yummy dishes and all that kind of stuff. But one thing that we need to remember is the great works that God has done in our life. Amen. How God sent His only begotten Son, came in the form of a flesh in this earth. And we need to be thankful for that. Thank God for all His goodness and mercies in our life. Thank God for our parents. Thank God for our children, brothers, sisters. Thank for God for all our families and a beautiful church, a congregation. We can come and serve and worship together, praising the name of God. In the book of Psalm we read, Give thanks unto God for His good, for His mercy, endless forever. It is only because of the mercies of God we are here today actually. If it had not been for God, we would have been consumed, actually. If it had not been for the mercies of God, we would have been consumed, actually. But thank God for His mercies. Let us have a heart of gratitude. This morning, my topic is not about meditation or about thanksgiving. If I would like to give a title to the message this morning, it is, Be Led by the Spirit of God. We all know that how important it is for all, each and every one of us to be led by the Spirit of God. But the fact of the matter is, it is a struggle to be led by the Spirit of God. Right? Because there are so many distractions and attractions that keep us away from being led by the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Right? Everybody is familiar with that verse. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God, are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God and the sons of God. If we are the children of God, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. The mandate on our life is that we need to be led by the Spirit of God. Why? We need the Spirit of God in our life because He is our comforter. We need the Spirit of God in our life because He is the one who guides us into all the truths. Hallelujah. John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17, it says, I will pray the Father and He shall guide, give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. In John 16, 13, it says, The Spirit of truth is come, and He will guide you into all the truth. We need the Spirit of God in our life. We need to be led by the Spirit of God in our life because we need to know what is the truth. Amen. And this is only the Spirit of God can tell us that what is true, what is false, what is wrong, what is right, actually. And He noted that He is our comforter. Okay? Spirit of God is the one who tells us, hey, this is a wrong turn. It's an evil path. Especially, let me tell you something. Our, notori our emotions are very notorious. Our emotions are always roller coaster, right? It goes up and goes down. Many times we make things, decisions based on our emotions. But the word of God teaches us very clearly that we need to be led, not just purely by gut feeling or emotions, but by why the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. And because it is the spirit of the living God, when we go into these roller coasters and notorious emotions in our life, it is the spirit of God that tells us, Mone mole. No, this is not the way. Stop right there. Think before you do this. Think before you turn right. Think before you turn left. It is the spirit of God. And it is the spirit of God that will guide us into all the truth. To be led by the spirit of God means we are letting the Holy Spirit take hold of us. And walking in the direction as the Holy Spirit is asking us to go. Amen. The steps we take in our life must be in accordance with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. To learn a little bit about being led by the Spirit of God, let us look into a passage 
of the Bible about a person who was led by the Spirit of God. Let's turn to Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 19 through 22. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 19 to 22. I verse 19, and this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? Verse 20, he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Verse 21, and they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, No, I'm not. Are you prophet? No, I'm not. Verse 22, then said they unto him, Who are you that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What do you say? yourself. Verse 19, it talks about the person, John. It, the person that John, that is talked in that verse, we know, all know that it is John the Apostle. Not the John the Apostle who was in the island of Patmos. It is not, it is, uh, it is uh, it, uh, sorry, it is not John the Apostle. It's not the John, it is John the Baptist actually, who is mentioned over here actually. John the Baptist was a person who was led by the Spirit of God. John the Baptist was born in a priestly family. His dad, Zechariah, was a priest actually. Both his dad and mom, they were from the family of Aaron, which was a family of the priesthood actually. Therefore, John was very, very familiar with the, all the priestly matters or very familiar with the priesthood. But John, you know what? He was led by the Spirit of the living God. Okay? And John was led by the Spirit of God and he took a little different direction. The direction that John took is, we see that John was led by the Spirit of God and he was led, as we read the passage, John was led into the wilderness actually. When he was ministering in the wilderness, wilderness means Jerusalem is a city and he was taken into the Judean wilderness. As he was led into the Judean wilderness, people were flocking to him in the wilderness. You know what is the reason people were flocking to him? Because John the Baptist was having what? The Spirit of God? move upon his life actually. When as he was preaching the message of repentance, people were getting convicted actually. And all the way, people came even into the wilderness to see John. Why? Because people needed a touch from their life, in their life actually. When the Spirit of God moves upon the life of a person, you can touch many souls in and around us. Hallelujah. That's what we can see here. John the Baptist dedicated his life to be led by the Spirit of God. Even though he was in the wilderness, people were coming to the wilderness to hear the word of God. What was he preaching? He was preaching the message of repentance. As he was preaching the message of repentance, people were convicted actually. Because people needed a touch from the spiritual depravity and all the things that they were facing. Lots of people in and around us need a touch from God, but we need to be led by the Spirit of God. John the Baptist was ministering at a time when the Herodians and the Romans were in power. Bible students think about this time when the, of a dark time, very, very dark time. And in this dark time, there was no voice of God. There was no prophetic voice in that time. But you know what? Who had the Spirit of God? John the Baptist. What does that tell us? That no matter what the times are, the circumstances in and around us may be adverse. But if you allow the Spirit of God to work in your life, hallelujah, Spirit of God can move no matter where you are. You might be in the wilderness, you might be in a time when there's dark times, no voice of God. You come to God, God will move in your life. You know what, John the Baptist could have stayed in Jerusalem, Right? Because he was the son of a priest. You know what? Not a normal position. He was the son of a priest, meaning he could have great connections in Jerusalem. He could have connections with the big officials over there. The Sanhedrins and all kinds of people there. He could have made, stayed in Jerusalem and could have been part of the big cool crowd in Jerusalem. But what did he do? The Spirit of God told him, whatever he did, he rather chose to step out of the scene of glamour. He chose to step out of the scene of performance. And the Spirit of God told him, go to wilderness. He listened to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Children of God, when you are led by the Spirit of God, you will step out of glamour. When you are led by the Spirit of God, you will step out of the performance. Right? You will, no matter if it is the wilderness, you will go out there because... When, the, when you are led by the Spirit of God, you know what happens? 
God will give you the strength to resist the temporary passing pleasures of this world. Hallelujah. Hearing the news that people are flocking to the wilderness, not in the city, flocking to the Judean wilderness. Who is coming over there? Verse 19 says, And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? From the city of Jerusalem, why in the heck people want to go to a wilderness? Right? People, priests and Levites are sent. You know, priests, why did priests and Levites, they are sent from the headquarters of Jerusalem to go and inquire about John the Baptist. Priests were sent because, you know, John the Baptist was from a priestly family. So they were wondering that, well, let the priest go and see why John is preaching this way in the wilderness. Second group that was sent was, the Bible scholars believe it is probably the men, the Sanhedrin, members of the Sanhedrin. You know what they went out there for? To check that if John the Baptist was a real prophet. These are people in very high positions going out from the city of Jerusalem to check out on John. Even though the people of Israel were away from the presence of God, and, uh, but there was a general understanding that Messiah will be coming soon, any time actually. So the priests and members of the Sanhedrin who came to check out on John the Baptist, they were actually very learned people. They know the Torah very well. They know the scriptures very well. They all know the Messiah is going to come actually. So there is this high expectation that Messiah is going to come. Messiah is going to come. There is a heightened sense of expectation that Messiah is going to come. But somehow they were blind. Somehow they were very blind actually. But the Spirit of God was moving mightily on John the Baptist. And you know what happened? They misunderstood him. They misunderstood. They're coming to John the Baptist and asking, John, uh, the Spirit of God is moving mightily on you. Are you the Christ? Are you the Christ? Spirit of God asked him, are you Elijah? The, the Jews and Jehovah's are asking, are you the Elijah? Are you the prophet actually? See, they misunderstood him because he was having the Spirit of God moving on a mighty way. But look at the answer of John. What did he say? I am, verse 21, I am not the Christ, I am not the Elijah, and I am not the prophet. So Lord God, if John the Baptist wanted to get a spotlight, I'm thinking that, man, he could have at least said yes to at least one of them, right? Hey, okay, no Christ, not Elijah, maybe a prophet. He didn't, he didn't say yes to Anything. His answer was a categorical, no, absolutely not. Not. We see when John was led by the Spirit of God, he was not looking for spotlight. Okay, He was not looking for spotlight or did not turn or twist anything actually. He could have taken the opportunity and used to twist to say that he is somebody. Right? He could have talked about his dad, all kinds of stuff. He didn't say he did not twist or did not want any kind of spotlight. Children of God, this is very important to understand that. We don't get twisted about our identity by anyone. We should not get twisted by our identity by anyone actually. No matter the times we are living in, we know that how much we are all, the, there's a lot of confusion going, especially in the educational system, right? The colleges, the schools, the educational systems are all trying to twist our God-given identity actually. But we need to be led by the Spirit of God so that we are not, nobody should twist our identity actually. We need to know, just like John the Baptist, who we are not. Something that we have to very clearly know who we are. Not actually. John the Baptist was very clear about his identity. He was not confused we need to know that we are not something actually, right? We, when we study the scriptures, learn the scriptures, we know very well who we are not. We are not the children of Satan actually. Amen. We are not children of this world actually, right? But we are children of Almighty God. That's what we read in John chapter 1 verse 12. That as many as received them, to them he gave the power to become the Children of God. We are the children of God, people of God. Let nobody change our identity, actually. 
It is the Spirit of God that leads us actually. As we are meditating on this person, it is the Spirit of God. We have to be led by the Spirit of God, especially youngsters. Listen to this, that let nobody change your identity actually. No one. No one. There is lot of our education system or whatever is going on is messing up our identity. We are getting confused. But be very clear. The people who are coming and asking John are not ordinary people. They are very high officials. And he is able to give a defense of who he is. John was led by the Spirit of God. But he was not influenced by the culture actually. I mean... He could have been, you know what, he was living in a time of Herodians. This morning, Pastor Jay, I mean, Matthew also mentioned, because last week that was a, a, a words for our meditation of the area meeting, right? He was living in a time of Herodians. He was living in a time of uh, the Sadducees. He was living in a time of the Pharisees, actually. You know what? These people could have been influenced because John was up in the echelons of the society there. He could have had, he would have been trying to get the influence and feel the crowd. But you know what? He did not get influenced by the Herodians who are the extreme liberals. He did not get influenced by the Sadducees who are the liberals. He did not get influenced by the Pharisees who are the conservative liberals. Do not get twisted and tossed. Do not get swayed by any of those things that is going in and around us. But be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Be led by the Spirit of God. Don't get in, manipulated. And because John is saying that I am not something, I am not something, whatever it is. Verse 22, I'm going to read quickly here. Then they said unto him, Who are you that we may give an answer to them that sent us? See, they are John already said that, who? I am not. Okay? But they are going to come and ask him again. That it, it's, it's getting interesting here. They are questioning him even more. If it, I was in John's place, you know what would I have done? I would have taken a flight and I would have not fought, fought actually. But John, he stood there. He stood there. He stood his ground. He did not run away. Children of God, we need to stand up in crucial moments of our life. Hallelujah. John was led by the Spirit of God. Verse 23, John is saying, Who is he? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet said. He could have boasted a lot of things. He could have twisted and turned. He could have taken the spotlights. He could have been influenced by a lot of things. But he said, no, I am just a voice in the wilderness. Verse 25, they're coming to him again and saying that, okay, you're not Elijah, you're not Christ, you are not the prophet, then how come you're baptizing? You don't have authority to baptize. In the Jewish custom, when a Gentile comes to a Judaism, they need to be baptized. But here the Jewish people are baptized. John was baptizing in Israelites, which only Gentiles had to do. He was suggesting the so-called chosen people had to be cleansed. So what is John's response? What right do you have to be baptized? John answered and said what? I baptize with water, but there is one standing among you whom you know not. There is one standing here, as I am baptizing for, he is coming, he is the one who is preferred after me, whose sandal straps, verse 27, I am not worthy to unloose. I am baptizing with water, but I am not worthy to take the straps of his sandals. John is saying, I am not even a servant. Uh, not that I am lower than a servant, I am a slave. In the Jewish times, you know what happened? Slaves were lower than servants. There was a saying, a servant could do anything for the master except taking straps of the sandals. That was considered a very menial service actually. So John is saying, he is lower than even a servant. Can you imagine the vision that John has about the one who is standing over there. He's led by the Spirit of God and he truly understands that he is all, nobody before the Almighty God. Hallelujah. 
verse 31 and 33. This is very interesting. It gets very interesting. Verse 31 and 33. I knew him not. Verse 31. I knew him not. Remember, John is in this area of Bethbara by the Jordan River. He's baptizing all the folks over there, hundreds and hundreds of folks, right? People are coming, but there's some, one standing over there, but he's saying, I do not know him. It's very interesting that Jesus was actually the second cousin of John, right? And you know that Jesus, uh, when Mary conceived Jesus, uh, John the Baptist was in the tummy of his mom, Elizabeth. So that's why when Mary visited Elizabeth, what happened? John leapt in the tummy of Elizabeth, right? So John the Baptist and Jesus have, based on that kind of area, only six months difference. Only six months. So they might have hung their cousins and they might have hung out each other, with each other actually. They might have played out with each other, okay? But even then, why did John say that he did not know Jesus? Even though he was a cousin, he hung out with him, played with him. He said he did not know Jesus because he didn't know he was the coming Messiah. He did not know Jesus was the Messiah. Think about for a minute. Think about a cousin that you have, a second cousin you have. He's a nice, good, cool guy or nice guy. He's very godly and everything. You, know? uh, and you hung out with him. You, you you played with him, you went to the summer moon coffee place and you are having coffee with him and sitting over there, he says, did you know I'm the Messiah? That's what John is going through in his mind. My cousin, the Messiah, or that's what, John did not know that this was the Messiah. This is where it gets, this is where it gets very interesting. John is not clear. John may be very confused. But one thing is clear. John is led by the Spirit of God. John is led by the Spirit of God. Children of God, when you get confused, when you do not know what to take, be led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. How did John know for sure that this Jesus, who is his cousin, is the Messiah? Verse 33 explains how John God, the revelation and the confirmation. Verse 33. I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. Children of God, this is called the Direct revelation by the Spirit of God. Amen. Think about John, okay? Think about John. He's baptizing people in Jordan. Lots of people are flocking to him, right? Coming to him. Priests are questioning him. Members of the Sanhedrin are questioning him. They are bombarding him with questions after questions actually, right? Humanly speaking, if I was in John's place, I would have been... Terrified, I was kind of frustrated and stressed out and say, God, I have been led by the Spirit and I have been living a life pleasing to you, all this kind of stuff, right? But you know what? John has been led by the Spirit of God. John is led by the Spirit of God. And John was told by this Spirit of God that he has been led. Think about this now. John is about, Jesus stepped out to the ministry at the age of 30. So we can imagine John the Baptist is about 30 and a half years. 30 and a half years, John was led by the Spirit of God. And pause for a minute. Imagine how much pain did John go through all his life all the attractions that he came in his life, he put it away. All the distractions, he overcome it. For this one moment of his life, this is the only reason John the Baptist was born on this, in this world. To, what, for, what, what is that? To reveal the Messiah actually. 
to reveal them. That is the only reason. And he kept his life. He was led by the Spirit of God. He kept his life all this time to be fulfilling this one mission of his life, one task of his life, that this is going to be the Messiah. And verse 34 says, when the Spirit of God, as so as John was baptizing there, right, he was not sure who is the Messiah, right? The Spirit of God descended upon Jesus. And it says the Spirit of God remained on Jesus. As the Spirit of God came, then that is why we can see verse 35 or verse 36. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. People of God, the world has been looking for the Lamb to come. Jewish people were looking for the Lamb. The people who were uh, the priests, the Levites, the members of the Sanhedrin, they were all looking for the Lamb. We have heard in the past weeks that uh, the Lamb of God messages, actually. John very well knows who is the Lamb. He knows the scriptures very well. He can go into the details of the different types of lambs that is needed for the sacrifice and all kinds of stuff. But here, John, filled with the Spirit of God, he is saying that, Behold the Lamb of God. Children of God, I don't want to, I want to stop here and uh, worship team can... Hallelujah, come up. We need to be led by the Spirit of God. We need to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes, John's life, John the Baptist's life, example is very helpful. But as I'm telling you, with, with a heavy burden, I'm saying, youngsters, children of God, yes, we hear all the time, how many times you heard, be filled with thee? Spirit. Be filled. Uncles and aunties and pastors and everybody. Be filled with the Spirit. Here we meditated this morning about a man. Thirty and a half years. He was waiting for this. Two words. The mission of his life was only two words. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, that was the only mission. To, just to, he didn't go out there and get the spotlight. He didn't do any of the kind. He didn't fall for the influences. He didn't twist and turn. He knew who he was. Children of God, know what is your identity. You are the child of God. Don't be twisted and tossed by these things and that things. Let the Spirit of God lead us. Let the Spirit of God guide us. How great it would have been if, if each one of us sitting here would not be led by our notorious emotions. How good it would be if each one of us would not be led by our notorious emotions, but rather be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Be led by the Spirit of God, church. Amen. The year is going to end. Prayers are going to come up. Prepare yourself. Be available to the Spirit of God. Let's not be yo-yoed by this and that, actually. Let us not be twisted. Know who, what is your identity. Know that you are a child of God. You are the temple of the living God. And be led by the Spirit of God. May God bless us with these words.